Good evening, non-existent viewers. It is TVB. And this is a video I've been waiting quite a while to make. This has been like an annual tradition of mine for my YouTube channel for since uh, I graduated high school way back in 2017. After I graduated high school, I made a video just talking about my high school experience. How those four years went, you know, uh, what changed, like how, my, how it impacted my life and, you know, stuff like that. And then a year later, I made a video talking about, you know, how my freshman year of college went. A year after that, back in 2019, I, you know, two years ago, I made a video talking about my sophomore year. Last year, I made a video talking about my junior year, or as I like to call it, like my half of a junior year. I like to say that my junior year went from like spring, like spring of 2020 to fall of 2020 because like I took a semester off fall 2019. I dropped out of college temporarily. And I went home and I, you know, worked at PetSmart, went to community college that semester. <laughs> and then I came back to Colorado that, uh, January and kind of, you know, picked up from where I left off, I guess you can say. And yeah, this technically I'm still in the middle of my senior year. I, I was never going to graduate college in four years, even before I changed majors when I was a freshman. Like I still have one more semester. I got just one. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about like how uh, things have just been going lately, you know, in the past year. Because last year I made the, this type of video like uh, like later in June, and oh my gosh, guys, it's crazy. I feel like this past year has been like an eternity. Like you know, life before the pandemic seems like a distant memory at this point. I know we have the the vaccines have been rolling out. I know that there's been a, you know things been slowly but surely going back to normal. But like you know, like you know, life before the pandemic seems like a while ago. And uh, even moving into my current house with uh, my friend Max and Aaron, like uh, that, even, like that was last year, uh, July thirty first, the day I moved into my current place. Even that seems like. It's been ages, but it's like, oh wow, like 11 months, that's all it's been. And yeah, the past year has been very, I don't want to say tumultuous, it's been very eventful, and I kind of want to just like, go through with you guys about like, just how I've been feeling, and you know, what's happened, and you know, goals and stuff like that, and uh, my fall semester of my fourth year this past, you know, like the the end of August or September, my fall semester got off to a very, like, bumpy start. There was a lot of ups and downs in terms of how I was feeling. Like, you know, first week of classes, like, I remember the first night of class, I was just so paranoid and distraught, and I was, like, crying and sobbing, and I was like, oh my gosh, this semester, it's so easy for something to go wrong. And, you know, throughout, like, September, I was just on this really bad loop of feeling pretty good about things some days and just feeling like an absolute train wreck the next and i and i was really afraid that this is gonna be the rest of my life i'm just gonna be stuck in this like you know this weird cycle of depression and i i think what uh caused me to i think what led me to breaking out of that cycle was just like a change of routine like i started prioritizing self-care i was attempting to, keyword, attempting to wake up earlier, go to bed at a more reasonable hour, I was, you know, I was trying to exercise more, and uh, just kind of like prepare for my future better, like, uh, look at jobs and internships, I was uh, drinking less, and, and uh, you know, I, I started using less meal swipes on campus, you know, the dining halls, I started cooking more and doing more chores around the house, and, you know, just trying to better myself and find, like, little ways to just feel better about how things were going. Like, one bit of self-care I've found has been very useful during the school year is that, like, during the day when I'm, like, in study rooms, doing homework, studying, like, or on Zoom meetings, you know, for online classes, I just leave my cell phone shut off. And I don't turn it back on again until I'm, like, transitioning, you know, taking the bus back home or something like that. And when I'm home, at some point in the evening, because if I'm, like, staying up late doing homework... I shut off my cell phone and I just leave it shut off for the rest of the evening. Like, I don't want to look at my phone, I don't want to text, I don't want to call, don't want to look at social media, just out of sight, out of mind, and I just leave it shut off for the rest of the evening. And it's been pretty relieving, because, you know, it, it can cause anxiety and stress and jealousy when you see people on social media that, like, 
uh, you, that make you jealous because, oh, they have it better than you do, seemingly, keyword seemingly. And I have a love-hate relationship with social media, to be honest. It's like, my Instagram page, some of you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, it's like, my Instagram, I just like to post drawings and artwork and stuff like that. And my Twitter page is mostly for promoting my YouTube channel. And uh, Snapchat, it's like, I only really like Snapchat people like I actually know. Snapchat, I've, I've found to be more convenient than texting for most people nowadays. From what I've noticed, and Facebook's like my go-to, it's like for everything else, but it's more personal. And yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with social media because it is how I stay in touch with a lot of people. And it's easy and convenient, but at the same time, it can also be very damaging. I think, and the reason why I was in so much like stress and like sadness at the beginning of the fall semester was because of online classes, like an entire semester of this online shindig. Because first of all, in Colorado, there were wildfires all summer, and the summer heat was persisting straight through September and into early October. It was, like, really hot outside, and the wildfires of smoke, oh my gosh, remember September? I'd be walking outside, and my eyes were just irritated as hell, man. Like, And I kept thinking eyelashes were falling into my eyes, but no, it was the ash from the nearby fires, and people were needed to be evacuated. And just, like, I remember... Like, a little more than a year ago, when COVID, like, the lockdowns just started. So, like, second half of March and, like, and throughout April of 2020, when everything was just closed, I swear, campus was a ghost town, and I kind of miss it. Like, it was so peaceful and quiet, and it was very serene, and it was very relaxing and soothing, because I, I was, like, bu- like, I was busy. Like, I had schoolwork going on. I was, I had online classes, but, like, I wasn't overwhelmed, and it was just very, like, relieving. That wasn't the case with the beginning of the fall semester. Like, everything was, this whole weird, like, somewhat open, somewhat not open thing is just, like, weird, because, like, we're, places are crowded and packed, but we're still expected to social distance and wear masks. Like, What? And in all honesty, I feel like that has, all in all, it's had some mixed results because COVID cases have still increased. Like, if everything stayed the way it was when COVID started, like, if everything just stayed closed, we probably would have gone back to normal, like, a while ago. We, like, safely have gone back to normal a while ago because some countries that actually listened to scientists and just stayed put inside. And, yeah. But, anyway, uh, that's... And also, I was just, like, stressed out with, like, online classes, and I touched base on this in my New Year's Day vlog, and I'll say it again here. Last year, when I made this type of video, when I was talking about, like, my third year at CSU, I was talking about my then-girlfriend, Sarah, a lot in that video, and how happy I was to be dating her. Yeah, I uploaded that, like I said, I uploaded that video, like, late of June last year, and Sarah and I broke up a few weeks after that, and the beginning of fall semester, I was still, like, very much, like, in grief, and in just, like, dealing with being single again, and not having her in my life like that anymore, and, you know, I'm not saying that to, like, and I just, and I, and I said this in my New Year's Day vlog, and I'll say it again here, she and I, as abrupt and difficult as it was when we split up, like, it was, completely 100% necessity, and we didn't end on bad terms. I have nothing against her. I have no anger or bitterness towards her. I mean, she and I last year had a fantastic relationship for five months, and I learned so much from her, from dating her, and, you know, just, I, I learned a lot about myself and the world around me, and she freed me from a lot of past insecurities, and I know it's old news, like, I'm not, like, I'm far past, you know, feeling upset about it, but, like, it's... <clears throat> I'm still, like, always going to be thankful for the experiences I have, and I hope she's in good health. And, uh, yeah, and I think what what also helped me, like, snap out of that, like, state of depression I was in was my friend Tom's wedding back in October, right before my 22nd birthday. We, uh, it was, like, a small, because of COVID regulations, it was a small wedding. You know, he married his love of his life, uh, Jaina, and our, my friend Ian flew out to, run the service as well. Like, Ian was my small computer at the campus minister I met uh, Tom through uh, before he moved to South Dakota last year. And yeah, so he came to visit us and we had we all had such a great time that day. My birthday was two days after that. And I was just feeling a lot better about things. I was like, yes, this semester is going to be A-OK 
and we're gonna plow ahead through this. And you know what, like with relationships and whatnot, and I've been single for almost a year now, and I know that a lot of my viewers, those who are subscribed to my channel, like, I have also, I've, like, had really bad success with, you know, dating and stuff like that, and please don't let that be, like, a measure of self-worth, because I feel like people who are insecure about, like, not dating, <coughs> oh, jeez, excuse me, not dating or being single or being a virgin or whatever, it's like, are, people are being their own worst critics, and I'm gonna tell you this now, like, dating is, like, a lot of things in life. It's a big game of trial and error, like publishing a book. I'm an English major, I'm pursuing a career in a fiction writing, and I've accepted this reality years ago. My novel ideas will be rejected by God knows my publishing companies before someone accepts my work. Just like, you know, dating, you know, it's like, you will be rejected and ghosted a lot before a girl, like, goes on a first date with you, or or a boy, or whatever gender you're into, and it might take you a lot of first dates, or flings, or one night stands, or whatever, before you meet that special someone, as I've learned last year, your first special someone is probably not going to be the one you spend, you grow old, and live a happy rest of your life with, and trust me, that's usually for the best. So, you just gotta let things happen as they are. I would like to date and find a new girlfriend at some point, but I'm trying not to, like, be too heavily fixated on because I have one more semester to go and uh, I have a summer class beginning on Monday so I've kind of just been like plowing ahead and you know what the right person both like friendly like friendly people and you know potential romantic partners those right relationships fall in place when I fall in place and you just gotta like rise above yourself every day I know some people are gonna lose their minds when they hear this but you gotta like you know the best way to find like a partner is to you know, not look from the first place. People are just like, oh, I've tried that strategy so many times, it doesn't work. Well, you can't just sit around and wait for that person to fall out of the sky. Like, you gotta, it's kind of like chasing a bird. You can't just run after the birds, they'll fly away. Instead, you gotta sit still, like, you know, lay out some bird seed, build up a little bird bath, and then the birds will come to you. You know, you gotta be presentable and work on yourself. And then, because, you know, that's like very attractive to all types of people, not just like romantic partners, but like with a, friends as well, they say like, hey, this person's comfortable with his own skin, that's great, he's happy, and I want to be around something like that, yeah, that sort of thing, but anyway, it's like, the uh, rest of my fall semester, like, 2020 last year was like a huge, like, the roller coaster here for me, like, a really big roller coaster, while I'd say ever since, like I said, ever since Tom we Tom's wedding, everything's been on a slow but steady increase of just good stuff happening in my life, and, uh, you know, we overcame 2020's election. Oh my gosh. If I went back in time a year ago and told my past self that Trump lost, I think past me would be flabbergasted. Like a year ago, I was genuinely convinced that Trump was going to win again by a, lands by a landslide. But nope, Biden took the cake. And uh, I made a video talking about the the election this past November. And uh, I mean, obviously I don't want this video to get political or anything, but if you guys want my opinions on that, like the, the videos... Uh, just like scroll in my 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 page and you'll find it. And I'd say overall my fall semester was it was a success. I bagged thirteen credits. I did drop a class last uh, the fall semester. I mean I wasn't like thrilled to do that, but it was the right thing to do. I'll be retaking that class this fall, and I'm excited to do so because it'll it'll be in person instead of online. And uh, they. Here, I, I, you know, you gotta, like, find the silver linings wherever you can, because I found some classes to be actually better now they're online instead of in person. Like my biology class, for example, that I took uh, last year. Uh, it was invertebrate biology. And uh, all the, of course, all the exams were online. Not only were they online, but the exams were open note, and they were copy and pasted questions from quizzes we took throughout the semester. And our final exam this past December was literally, like, it was cumulative, and it was, like, copy-pasted questions from, like, you know, the older exams. And our professor, like, in November, oh my gosh, my poor professor was put through the freaking ringer last year. I, I feel really bad for her, but it's like, she just flat-out canceled it. And, like, uh, and the final exam, it was my final exam of semester, and it's like, okay, well, as far as I'm concerned, we won the final battle of our semester before it even started. So it was like, had multiple tabs open, and I could listen to all the dragon force I wanted to as I slayed the exam. And I had, I ended that semester with really great grades, and, and yeah, it was like, it got off to a bumpy start, but overall it was a success. And going home for Christmas and New Year's, 
and seeing like my dad and my sister for the first time since like January of 2020 was a very strange feeling because you know actually you're safer from COVID in an airport than you are in a hospital which is like statistically speaking which is crazy to think about and it was just so weird like coming back to you know like my hometown New Jersey you know after everything that's happened because again 2020 was like such a crazy year and you know it was that halfway mark f with my senior year and coming back was I wasn't uh you know because winter break is for a month like five weeks roughly I you know I was home for like <clears throat> only two and a half weeks because I had to come back to uh CSU uh like early in January because I picked up a gig at the bookstore on CSU's campus I was part of the pre-order rush staff for three weeks where basically I was just like running the cash register and uh, just like organizing books and sorting things and helping uh, students find textbooks. Like, the beginnings of the semesters are always like a really busy time for the bookstore to, uh, you know, and uh, for obvious reasons, like kids need their books. And uh, yeah, I love bookstores. Honestly, I could hang out in places like Barnes & Noble or CSU's bookstore all freaking day and just, you know, be happy as a clam. I actually picked up a really neat, uh, mythology coloring book so i was like scribbling in that you know if you follow me on instagram you probably know what i'm talking about and yeah i bagged some uh pocket money there you know savings money and uh and like that gig was only for a few weeks i would have i wouldn't have been mad about if i just stayed like working there as like a sales associate all year round but like uh i picked up a better job for like for what i want to do with my life recently i just got a job at a dog daycare but more on that later i'd say like a like you know this spring semester was not a like a roller coaster like last year's was. It wasn't like any like dips or lows. It was just like on a steady level of just like blessings. And it feels like a blur. Like my weekends throughout most of like the past two semesters haven't really been feeling like weekends because like well most of the classes are all online now and everything is <clears throat> virtual. So it's like every day is kind of like a Saturday or a Sunday in a weird way so it's like oh I, I couldn't even like review that many movies this the past two semesters because most weekends I was just like way too busy with homework and studying and classes and I just had to stay in and like and, and you know not go to the movies or not make videos or do the things I loved doing which I feel kind of ashamed for but at the same time you know it's like I'm a student my studies come first and you know YouTube is a huge hobby of mine it's changed my life and it's really you know been uh like one of my f like one of my favorite things to do for as long for almost eight years now and uh but like it it's gotta take a backseat because like this is like you know i gotta you know do big boy stuff like you know go to college and things like that so i gotta prioritize you know my grades first the secondary stuff later and you know i played the tuba for the i've been playing tuba since i was 11 I usually play the tuba, I don't play for the marching band during the fall semesters, I don't play like tuba during the fall anymore, so I like play for the, I usually play for a concert band, but concert band this year like filled up all the slots, like filled up like lickety split, so I play for symphonic band instead, which is really not that different from a, you know, the concert band, it's just the music is slightly more regress, we just practice more throughout the week, and uh, since due to COVID regulations, we like you know the class ended like right before spring break because you know you're not gonna have like you're not gonna play your instrument from home over zoom that's just stupid and like we didn't even have like concerts unfortunately with this like we dressed up in concert attire as if we were like playing a concert you know doing run-throughs of music but like uh we just we there was no like audience we they just filmed us playing but you know what? I, I got to play the tuba for one more semester, a bag of credit, and you know, playing the tuba is definitely not a skill I want to lose, because it is a great way to let off some steam, so I couldn't be mad. And after I graduate from CSU, I've really considered starting like a piggy bank or something, you know, so I could eventually one day purchase my own tuba and play my own music just straight from home. And you know, it just play tuba on my own terms. Like how awesome would that be i would start like i would start a youtube series called tuba tuesday it's like a live stream series where i just like every tuesday I just live stream myself playing tuba i'll be playing solos or you know whatever i feel like playing that that day like that's that'd be that'd be the nice goal to have and yeah spring break this year spring break for csu is usually like 
in the middle of March. But since due to COVID regulations, like because you know Thanksgiving break is always always like in the last month of fall semester, you know, obviously. And the idea with last semester was like you know the handful of classes that were in person, it's like they would be in person or hybrid classes like my lab, where I was like in person every other week until uh, the like until Thanksgiving. Then everything just goes back being virtual. The idea being like oh everyone's on campus and everyone goes home and stays there, so like it reduces the risk of people catching COVID. They did that that same idea with spring break. So spring break this year was uh, in April. Like, in the middle of April instead of March. And it was like, I'm not going to lie, a lot of us felt really overwhelmed, like, in March. Because it's like, oh, we need a rest. And one of our professors from my young adult literature class threw a bone at us. And was like, okay, you guys can uh, have a reading day where we're just like, you know, stay home and read instead of, like, coming to class. So I was like, thank you. Spring break for me this year was like, I didn't go anywhere. I just did put because I had, like, a giant project for my, like, literature class. So, for me, spring break was more like a staycation. I just stayed home and, like, I, I did some fun stuff. Like, I, you know, like I played my Xbox and I just kind of hung out when I wasn't doing my homework. And, uh, yeah, the rest of the spring semester was pretty... It was pretty hectic, you know. I didn't upload videos for a few weeks because I really just wanted to focus on passing my whatnot. And I did. My lowest grade this spring semester was a 79, and I, you know, bagged 15 credits. And I'm technically going to be a part-time student this fall because I, I'm i done with electives. I only need, like, you know, I only need, like, 14 more credits to graduate, I believe, including my summer class that I'm taking, uh, you know, that starts next week. It's going to be for eight weeks. And, you know, it's most it's all just, like, major and minor requirements at this point, and yeah, it's like, I, as far as I'm concerned, the most challenging part of my CSU career is, is already behind me, so the rest of the, of my CSU career, it's not, it's not gonna be easy, of course, it's still gonna be a lot of work, I'm still gonna be, like, have exams and projects and tests and things like that, but I, I think, I'm just happy that I'm not, like, I don't need to take, like, stupid elective courses anymore, not that there's anything wrong with electives, I've had, like, really great elective courses in the past, but it's all, like, major and minor requirements, you know, things that are actually, like, what I'm here to study for. I feel like there's not as much to say about, like, this past semester as there was, like, you know, last year, because of, like, and now that COVID's kind of, like, winding down a little bit more, things haven't been as eventful. Like I said, 2020 was, like, a huge series of, like, highs and lows, while this year has just been like on a slow but steady increase, there hasn't really been any dips, but at the same time, there's no like peaks either. Like, I still believe that like 2020 and 2021 were like my picks for my best years so far because like 2020's high points were uh, so far. I know 2021 is only like we're only halfway through this year, so we still got plenty of this year left to go, but like <clears throat> as of now, 20's high points were higher than 21's high points, but. 21's low points, not that really have been, have been any low points in the first place, were not as low as 20's low points for me, if that makes any sense. And uh, I will say that, like, you know, things have been going on in my life. Like, after finals, I flew home with my mother, and uh, I, 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 I'm going to, like, spare you guys the details, but, like, my parents just got a divorce. That's my first time, like, saying that on video, my parents split up, and, uh, we, my mom has been living in Denver with my uncle since, uh, January, and we flew home, and I, you know, I visited my friends briefly, and we packed up a lot of her stuff, and we road tripped our Subaru all the way across the country, like, I made a handful of videos, uh, while we were going across the country, you know, packing up her stuff and whatnot, and it was, it was a fun road trip, I'm not gonna lie, it was, like, a nice way to get out of Dodge for, like, a week, we went zoo hopping, because, I mean, if you've been following my channel for a while now, you probably know it's, like, animals are, like, one of my biggest passions, I've been wanting to be a zookeeper for as long as I can remember, that's the plan one day, is, you know, be a zookeeper is, like, a day job, and, ha and, like, you know, write books and make videos by night, and we, Stopped by at three different zoos along the way. We, we like went to different hotels and stayed overnight different places. First, uh, first stop we went to the Indianapolis Zoo, and then the next day we went to St. Louis and uh, went to the St. Louis Zoo. 
and uh, then the day after that, we went to Kansas City and visited Kansas City Zoo. Some of like, the best rated zoos in the country, and I can see why. I was like overall really impressed with their exhibit designs, especially Kansas City Zoo. Like I made like the zoo puns videos where I was like making like really bad jokes at all those different places. Like Kansas City Zoo, I think was my favorite out of the bunch because like the park structure is like a figure eight shape where like all the uh, African animals are on like the the I want to believe the eastern side of the park while everyone else is like on the western side and like that stretch that you walk through to get to the African section of the park is like that whole stretch is for the elephants I was thoroughly impressed with their elephant exhibit at Kansas City Zoo because elephants are one of the harder like one of the hardest animals to take care of in captivity because like you the average zoo has like two to three elephants living on a not so humongous space like you know it's still a big space but like Comparative, like, compare that to, like, wild elephants roaming in huge herds going miles on a daily basis. So elephants, you know, are, they, it's very easy for them to get stressed in a zoo environment because of that. But they have, like, seven African elephants with that whole stretch of the park all to themselves. And it was just really impressive. And all the animals are active. Like, when I was, when we were there, like, not that many, not that many of the animals were just, like, lounging around being, like, you know, fat so I guess you can say, like, everyone was up to something, and it was, it was just a really well-designed park, and we came back, and uh, when I came back to, and when we, when I got back from the road trip, I started my new job at the dog daycare, uh, I work at a place called Dogtopia now, and, uh, I found the job through a classmate, her name's Brianna. She and I have had uh, three online classes together within the past two semesters. It's a funny story. She uh, was uh, started as a like we had a creative. We have had two creative writing classes. That is like this spring semester and back in the fall semester. You know, upper division like creative writing classes, and we had uh, our dog biology class. Like we both took a biology class, like an online class that is all about dogs. And uh, I like I found that out. I was like, and then I messaged her over Zoom, being like, "Wait a minute, like you're in both my biology class and my English class. Like, what is this?" And she was like, "Oh yeah, I'm a zoology major and an English minor." And uh, I was like, "Oh wow, that's the reverse of what I'm doing. I'm an English major and a zoology minor. I started as a zoology major at CSU, but like I changed to a minor because I just could like." Honestly, all the hard sciences and math classes, like chemistry and stuff like that, they wanted me dead. And for what I want to do, like, the, the field I want to go into doesn't really require that much chemistry or math in the first place, so I changed it to a minor. And, you know, like I said, I love fiction, I love the arts, I love being creative, so I think English was a really good switch. A few weeks after that, she messages me again over Zoom and be like, yeah, I reversed my major my minor because, you know, chemistry sucks. And I was like, oh, shit, welcome to the club! And in one of our discussion assignments, she mentioned the dog daycare. So I, we exchanged contact info, and I was like, hey, uh, is your dog daycare hiring? And she was like, yeah, man, you should you should apply right away. And I did, and they got back in the lickety split, and I've been, you know, working at the dog daycare. I went through training a few weeks ago, and I've been in the playroom with the dogs. It's a pretty straightforward position, you know, I just, like, yeah, I'm in there with the dogs, and I'm, like, preventing scuffles, and make sure all the dogs are getting along, cleaning the place up, keeping the place clean, and... You know, just, like, making sure the dogs are just having a good time. And, you know, YouTube is not a job. YouTube is a hobby. I have actually have lost watch hours. It's, it's really hard to get your channel monetized nowadays. So, like, like I said, YouTube is a hobby. I would like to get paid off of YouTube one day, but I never want it to be, like, full-time. I want to have, like, a day job that, like, if YouTube, if I do make ad revenue off YouTube someday, and if that ad revenue is, like, goes to like primarily my youtube related expenses like my editing software my camera my microphone my uh oh goodness uh like movie tickets to review movies and new video games to like make gaming videos and other like youtube stuff like that and if i had a day job that just paid for everything else like i would be perfectly content with that i do not want to get like super huge on youtube because here's the harsh reality with youtube people need to stop viewing it as like a permanent home and start viewing it as, like, a launching pad for bigger and better things. Because, first of all, for every YouTuber that does, like, get to make YouTube videos full-time and get paid for it, there's hundreds of thousands of channels like mine that really don't get noticed. And they're all and we're all just, like, climbing over each other for a taste of notoriety. <clears throat> and it's just a very brutal business to get big. And, nowadays. and the ones that do get big, like the big YouTubers, 
they're not going to last forever. I can't help but think about, like, Tobuscus. Like, he was so huge in middle school. Like, he was just an icon. Then he faced Me Too's wrath. And, oh my gosh, that was terrible. Like, the, the all the messed up stuff that he did with his former girlfriends. Oh, that, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. But it's like, you see his channel now, and it's like, it's a relic and it's all ruins. Meanwhile, George Miller, a.k.a. Filthy Frank... You know, the guy who created Pink Guy, like, hey, boss, can I have a beat that, please? Oh, my gosh, I love that guy. He recognized when his time was up and knew that his whole flavor of comedy was fading away. And, like, Filthy Frankie, like, YouTube made George Miller really depressed. So he, 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 died, he died a hero instead of living long enough to become the villain. And now he's Joji. He's a famous musician. I don't want my YouTube channel to turn into that. Like, I, if it's, again, if it just stays small, if it stays, like, if it's enough to pay for, like, some, like, nifty things, but not, like, my full source of income, I'd be perfectly okay with that, but that's, I still got a long ways to go before any of that happens, so yeah, like, I, I'm really thrilled with the job that I just landed, it's been keeping me out of the house, it's been helping me enjoy the summer, and it's, like, I've, my, I really like my coworkers, my managers, and it's just, like, a really great environment to be working in. And as for, like, goals, like, aside from, you know, aside from graduating this December or not, it's like, chances are I'll be moving out of Fort Collins, or I'll stay here. It really just depends on, like, where the jobs are at, I guess. But I feel like there's going to be a lot more for me, like, elsewhere than here. So chances are I'm going to, like, be moving out of my house this December. But we'll cross the bridge right together, I suppose. I'm going to be looking at jobs and internships, you know, finding things to do. And as for, like, YouTube goals, like, my channel hit 300,000 views back in, like, November, and last time I checked, we're currently at 367,000 views. My goal is to make it to 400,000 views by New Year's Eve, because I made it to 100,000 views in 2018 and 200,000 views in 2019, so if we can just maintain, like, an average of, like, 100,000 views on an annual basis, that would be superb. And I hit 1,500 subscribers, like, a month ago, which is awesome, but I'm in no hurry to get a 2,000 subscribers. If anything, I would rather lose subscribers right now. Let me explain. I have 1,500 subscribers, right? But I, last time I checked, it's been, like, three months since I last had a video make it past 1,000 views, and it's been, like, I, I think two months since I've had to make this even a hundred views. Like most videos I've uploaded within the past few years don't even crack 50. So that means there's a lot of subscribers. There's a lot. I have a lot of people subscribe to my channel who never watch my videos, which is really bad for the algorithm. Like it's better to have fewer subscribers who actually watch your videos than a lot of subscribers that don't. So if you're subscribed to my channel, and if you never watch my videos, just unsubscribe, please. You're you're solving more problems for me than you're causing. But yeah, I just I'm not like in a hurry to like I'm more concerned like the views. As a matter of fact, I think like 98% of people who actually have watched my videos aren't even subscribed to me in the first place. I'm pretty sure most of that is like thanks to like my most viewed videos, like my Puma Fact video, and like my uh like the my like video I did for Jurassic Park three years ago and all that jazz. But yeah, yeah, getting you know goals on YouTube. It's gonna be a marathon, not a sprint. And I'm not in any hurry. I'm gonna let again. I'm just gonna keep going about my business as long as it doesn't you know come at the cost of like my grades, and my you know college career, of course, and uh, just let things happen as is. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I'm sorry if I was like kind of stammering. I've been up since like. 5 a.m. because I had to wake up early to catch the bus for a morning shift at the dog daycare. And yeah, I should probably go to bed soon. This gameplay that you guys are watching right now, this is the highest I've ever scored on a D machine. Or I think that's how you pronounce this map on Black Ops Cold War. And I went for, like, you know, I, w I went for that round 50 eggs fill. This is like the gameplay I recorded when I was, like, going for camos for my Road to Platinum series, so expect episode 6 to go up, like, soon-ish. I went for the eggs fill, and I lost, and I was like, ugh, I could've... I, I could've, uh, completed the eggs fill if I just played smart and prepared for it better. But anyways, 
Thanks, uh, you know, one day around for the X Phil and D Machine. One day. Thanks a lot for watching this video. And uh, I might, like I said, my summer class begins on Monday. And uh, if I'm not uploading much for the rest of the summer, I want to apologize because you know I got I really got to prioritize this class. This class comes first, and it's what I need to complete to you know graduate this December with my minor. And uh, if I'm not like uploading, I, I I hope I can you know review movies and keep making you know videos on a consistent basis. But if I'm not, I apologize in advance. Anyways, you guys really are the best. You guys truly are beasts. Thanks a lot for watching this video, and you have a nice night. Stay beastly.